asking them, you know, what do your parents do for a living? Or where do you live? What, you know, you start prejudging all these things. And, you know, sometimes we look at a, a child who looks all nice on the outside, and they may not be very nice children. <laughs> but um, I just thank God that he looks at the inside, and he died for us before, and before he even knew us. So uh, go ahead. Amen. You have anything to say? Oh, turn, test it. Turn her up a lot. <laughs> Testing one, two. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. More. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise, for it was grace that bought my liberty. I do Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They do wonderfully. You know, one of the things I believe is I've been a musician for many, many years. And I believe it doesn't know how, God doesn't care how professional you are. 
It's if it comes from your heart. And that's from the heart. And so God bless you, you know, praise God, although they could be professional. Amen. That's true. Amen. All right, Sunday school is dismissed at this time. All you kids behave. Make sure that if I get a report that you're not behaving, you're going to be disciplined. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, without further ado, I'm going to have our bishop come. And share with you, I've been with Bishop for many years, got to know him in California at a conference. And uh, he came up to me and said, I want you to come to Nigeria. Little did I know what that meant. It wasn't just come to Nigeria once, but it was come to Nigeria every year. And so I believe I've been there six times in January. I'm going again. Couldn't go in, in October, September because of program difficulties, but... I'll be going in January for uh, about seven or eight days and uh, to be with him again, uh, to teach the pastors and leaders there and, and to share on worship, what real worship is all about. So, Brother Andrew, would you please come, Pastor, and share with us what's on your heart this morning? God bless you. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. Let's pray. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you adoration. There is none like you. Jehovah, you are our Father. Your thought towards us are not the thought of evil, but Lord, that will have an expected end. Lord, thank you for the heart you've given to us. Thank you for the year you are giving to us. Help us to understand and to retain your word. Help us to live a victorious life. Thank you, Lord, for this service. Thank you, Lord, for this ministry. Thank you for your presence. Glorify your name. Lord, you are bigger than the biggest. You are stronger than the strongest. You are greater than the greatest. You are our rock. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Last Wednesday, we started a topic, life is like a journey, life of a journey. Life is like a journey. What I want us to Understand today, not only will I talk later about that of Wednesday, but I'll talk on what I said, the be part of it, the role of the Holy Spirit in our life on planet Earth. To me, I believe life began with God. I believe every life that is existing on planet Earth today came in first as a seed, a seed from the father to the mother. And the mother gave birth because that seed in the mother's womb developed and became who you are today. So the journey of life actually starts from God. But you get to a stage in life when 
everything you do now rests in your hand. Amen? Uh, there's something I want us to quickly look at before we continue. Can you please? That is, there are two kinds of people in this world. One, the people that are known. Two, the people that know. What do you mean by people that are known? The people that know. Every one of us fall into the, category, uh, the number two category. We know. But not everybody on planet Earth is known. Every one of us knows somebody. But not every one of us are known. There are many of us, when we pass on, when we die, only your family knows that somebody has died. Let me use that example. But there are some, when they die, the whole world knows. What makes the difference is the way you live your life. Amen? You can make up your mind to say, I want to be known. In a positive way, not in a negative way. Amen? The journey. I will be coming back by God's grace. If Christ tarries, if that is the will of God to this church next year. Between now and next year, I want to give you homework. Amen? How many of you will do the homework? Amen? Okay, these are the homework. Study Psalm 23. Efficient one. I hope you are writing it down. Efficient one, 13 to 23. Philippians 3, 12 to 16. 2 Timothy 2, 3 to 6. Hebrew 12. One to two. If I was staying here for a month, I won't give you these scriptures. But I'm giving you these scriptures because this is all about the message. Amen? Study it. Read it. For example, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. When the Lord shepherds your life, you have a joyful ride. Amen? So that is your homework. Amen? I don't keep the homework because you don't know when I'm coming back. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to the message. Life it's like a journey. In this journey of life, without the Holy Spirit, we are helpless. In this journey of life, without the Holy Spirit, we are helpless and will have a life of failure. Without the Holy Spirit, we will will be helpless. What are the roles of the Holy Spirit in our life? Well, let's quickly look at the Holy Spirit was active when the world 
was created. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. The men and the women of old could do nothing until the Holy Spirit fills them. Until they are filled with the Holy Spirit, they could do nothing. Check men from Genesis to Malachi. Every prophet, everyone that God used are filled with the Holy Spirit. In Genesis, we are told that the Holy Spirit hallowed the ground. Then God spoke. When God called Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, God said to him, I will be with you. I will make you great. He used the word I will, which means I am going to be with you. Abraham was sent out from his family to a place that his descendants will possess. But he couldn't do it by himself. God said, I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to be with you. Amen? Is it? Jacob? Jacob did something with his mother. You know the story, Genesis 28. After he cheated his brother, the brother thought, oh, I'm going to kill him. The mother, Rebecca, heard of it and said, come, go and meet my brother. He was running, and he got to a place he slept and used a stone as a pillow. Then, while he was sleeping, he dreamt a ladder, angel descending and ascending. And God said to him, I will not leave you until I have fulfilled all that I have spoken. I will not leave you. Amen? God said to Jacob, I will not leave you. And when you read Exodus chapter 30, 33, you find that the, Moses said to God, we are going nowhere without your presence. Exodus 33, 15. We are going nowhere without your presence. Let's come to the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was born through the Holy Spirit. In Luke chapter 1, when the angel came to Mary, Mary said, how would this be? The angel said, the Holy Ghost will do it. Amen? The birth of Jesus Christ came in through the Holy Spirit. And with the power of the Holy Spirit, though John was still a baby in the womb, he recognized the presence of Jesus Christ. Because Elizabeth said, when she heard of the salutation of Mary, Mary, the baby in her womb lifted up for joy, which means John the Baptist worshipped who? Jesus Christ. Recognized the presence of Jesus Christ. Though Jesus Christ was still in the womb. And that is the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ lived 33 30 years on planet Earth. But when he was about to start his ministry, what happened? The Holy Spirit came. I'm giving you all these examples for you to know 
the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. If you think you can do it, you can succeed in this life journey without the presence of the Holy Spirit, you are deceiving yourself. In Luke Twenty four. Jesus Christ told his disciples, Tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with the power. But before then, in John chapter 14, he makes us to understand, or he told the disciple and said, Hey, I will not leave you an orphan. The Holy Ghost will come. I am going to leave. And he said, it is blessed for me to leave. For if I don't leave, the Holy Spirit will not come. And who is the Holy Spirit? Your comforter, my comforter. He said, the Holy Spirit will bring things to your remembrance. It will guide you. It will shepherd you. You are not going to be alone. In this journey of life, that you don't know what will happen to you tomorrow. But there is someone that knows what will happen to you tomorrow. And that is the Holy Spirit. Amen? Life without the Holy Spirit. Is helpless. Let us look at the life of King Saul, King David, King Solomon. The three of them failed in their life. They sinned, they committed offense, they sinned against God. But two of them, the kingdom was, one, the kingdom was removed. The other one, the kingdom was divided because of his sin. Saul, King Saul sinned, and what happened? The kingdom was removed from him. What did he do? He went to consult witchcraft. He didn't depend on the Holy Spirit. He turned away from God. What did Solomon do with all the wisdom, everything that God gave to him? He went into idolatry. And God said, because of your father, David, who walked before me, I will not divide the kingdom in your time. I will divide it in your son's time. But David committed sin. And what was the prayer of David? David said, take not that spirit away from me. Amen? Though I sin, please don't your spirit away from me because when you do, I am nothing. David sinned, but he did not turn away from God. He depended on the Holy Spirit because he knew he cannot succeed without the person of the Holy Spirit. That is why you and I must live a life not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Amen? Then we come to our Wednesday memory verse. 
What was number three? What was number one? Number two, be patient. In this life we are living in, if you want to be known, not just to know, you want to be known, number one, you must discipline yourself. Discipline your eyes. The lust of the flesh. The pride of, the, of life. Pride. The lust of the eyes. How many of us are good at window shopping? I'm just going for window shopping. Why are you going for window shopping? Your eyes want to see. And by the time you go for window shopping, you end up, let us not go there. Window shopping. Eyes. Your eyes want to see. Lawful eyes. You cannot run the race of this life joyfully when you cannot control your eyes. Job said, I discipline my eyes to make sure I don't look at certain things twice that I ought not to look. I used to run when I was young. I cannot run these days. What I mean, I used to do cross, cross country. Three miles, four miles, 20 miles, I do it. But there's one thing I know. When you are running a race, you don't look back. Because the second you look back, it slows you down. Focus on where you are going. It takes discipline. Humility. Pride. Discipline yourself. The Bible says, a little sleep, a little folding of hand. So come at what? Poverty. Don't tell yourself that I'm going to do it tomorrow when you can do it today. Greatness in life comes with discipline. I like watching basketball, but the only problem I'm having with the youth, I love watching it, but if they can put on long sleeve, I will enjoy it more. Because almost all our youth, they put contour on their body. They design their body with different mark. So, there's no more space in their body. What are you doing? Come on. But they still make millions. Why are they making millions? Why do we still watch them when we don't even agree with their lifestyle? Because of self Discipline. Once you are out of shape, they bench you in any sport. We were watching, uh, is it baseball? Is it captain you call him, the one that controls them? Huh? The manager. I think it was up to three times the manager came to withdraw the one throwing. Uh, Picture. Okay, what's him doing? What happened? The manager came out, remove him. Put him on that person. He came out again, remove him. 
And what do they do? They go at the back and start practicing. Life is about discipline. Amen? If you want to be great, you want to be known, you want to achieve your dream in life, you must discipline yourself. And let me tell you, church, in the process of disciplining yourself, you are going to lose some friends. You are going to lose some friends. Because those who cannot measure up with you, what will happen? They will go. And my dear, I'm being honest. Wherever you are watching me, I'm being honest. If your pastor is somebody I will not gain spiritually from, I will distance myself. Because I know where I'm going. And I want to surround myself with people who will help me get to where I am going. Amen? Discipline. The number two is what? Patient. Patient. When you pray, the answer has not come. What do you do? Worship the Lord. While you are waiting, worship the Lord. I was with my daughter in Houston. They took me out for lunch. And where they asked the place, I don't know what, how they cook the food, that that place rush. See, and what they do, there's a space, they have big bowl of granite. While you are waiting, you can be eating granite. It's free. Just stay there and be eating granite. It can take 15 minutes, one hour. You are waiting until they call you. But while you are waiting, you are doing what? Eating granite. And the ground feed up of, my God. Waiting. Occupy yourself. When you worship the Lord, you see, two hours will be like two seconds. When you are doing nothing, it's like the day is forever. Uh, let me, I don't know in America, but in Nigeria, there's one month that is longer than every other month. Do you have it in, in America? In Nigeria, January is longer than any other month. It's the same days, but it's longer. The same number of days, but it's longer. Why is it longer? Especially those who are waiting for salary. You know why it's longer? They blew off their money for Christmas and New Year. So their mind is as waiting for when the month so that they can receive salary. They receive once a month. So the the month look as if it's not coming. Wow, what is going on? Because there is nothing. The, the expectation is what? Big. So we now say January is longer. It's not that it's, you not get it. Amen? But if you are occupied, amen? Before you know, say, wow! When did you enter January, uh, July? We are now 22nd or something like that. July is almost going, wow! So fast. When you are occupied, Time look fast. When you are not occupied, time look forever. Get yourself engaged. Amen? Put yourself into something and be patient. Amen? God is working something in your life. Allow the Holy Spirit 
Amen? Then the third one is what? Faithfulness. Faithfulness without accountability is no faithfulness. Faithfulness without accountability is not faithfulness. Remember, every one of us will give account. Galatians chapter 6, from verse 7 tells us, God is not mock. Whatsoever a man soweth, that will he reap. If you sow to the spirit, you of the spirit reap eternal life. You sow to the flesh, you of the flesh reap what? Corruption. Faithfulness. Faithful in what God has committed into your hand. Whatever you are doing, do it as unto the Lord. Even when your pastor is not around, do it as unto the Lord. Because every one of us will stand before God and give account. I'm going to give account of my life before God. So, my wife doesn't need to be with me to know that I am faithful to her. My church doesn't need to monitor me to know that I am faithful to her, to her. Why? Because I know I will give account, not just to my wife or to the church, but to God. He sees everything. There is nothing hidden before him. So whatever I am doing, I do it faithfully. I'm called to serve in the usher, I serve faithfully. Called to serve in the choir or the worship, whatever I am called to do, I do it unto the Lord. Faithfully. He that is faithful with a little will be faithful with much. Hallelujah. The journey. You can study the life of Joseph. We went through it on Wednesday. Joseph was faithful. Joseph had every opportunity to say, okay, let me live this life. But he did not drift away. He knew life is about journey. It's a journey. And along the way, you know, David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. There are values on the way. There are shadows on the way. There are obstacles on the way. There are mountains on the way. There are times when things you happen to us, you say, is God really on our side? Lord, what is happening? I don't understand. That is why you need to stick with God. Amen? Moses. Moses' life. Moses was born. Before he was born, there was a decree that every male child should be killed. Before Moses was born. But the Bible tells us that when the parents saw that Moses was fair, handsome, they decided not to kill him or to do anything. They kept him for three months. You all know the story. Along the way, he was 40 when he thought, oh, my people will understand who he is. But they didn't. And God sent him to another school. First, the 40 years 
he went into a school where he studied, got the qualification, degree. Okay? I normally tell some of my pastors, I said to them, you, you, you need to go to Jesus school. They said, Bishop, what do you mean by Jesus school? I went to Bible school. Yes, you went to Bible school. That is good. But you need to go to Jesus school. Because Jesus school is different from Bible school. There are many pastors that have gone to Bible school, have degree, PAD, PBD, whatever qualification they have it, but they have never stepped into the classroom of Jesus school. Amen? Until you go into Jesus school before you never come out and say, yes, I'm a man of God. Because in Jesus school, you'll be taught humility. And that's what happened to Moses. With all that Moses acquired, God did what? Send him to where? To desert. His life turned around. Moses will live 40 years where he was served. Anything he wants, he gets it. He commands. People stand up when he's coming. People bow to him. But now, God took him from that position to a position that he had to be going with sheep and cow. Can you get that immunity? How God humbled him. God took him from the highest to where? To the lowest. 40 years before God appeared to him. In the journey of life, there are things that will happen. You ask yourself, why? But when you focus on Jesus Christ, you will go through victoriously. Moses. What of King David? Pastor, how can somebody start a ministry with no good people? God called you to start a ministry. And the bunch of people that he brought to you to start with are people that are crippled, people who have needs. That's what happened to David. People who were in debt, people who were frustrated, there were about 400. This is a man running for his life, and you are giving him 400 people. People have asked me, why do you not travel with your wife wherever you are going? I can't pay the airline. Are you getting it? Amen? But here is David running for his life, and God gave him 400. Beside wife and children, I don't know how many. And he moved from place to place. God was preparing him. And that is why the book of Psalm, he wrote most of them because of what he passed through. Today, the Bible is not complete without measuring David. Amen? Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Hebrew, Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, did what? Endure the cross. Paul. I can go on and go on, but all I want to say before we pray, short prayer too, prayer point, is that life is like a journey. A journey has preparation. And the journey starts when you are prepared. Preparation. I don't know where you are. I don't know where I am. I don't know whether I'm close to the end of my journey. I don't know. 
You don't know whether you are close to the end of your journey. But we know. Church, listen. As much as I believe in celebrating birthday, I look forward to celebrating birthday. I ask my children, what do you give to me on birthday? Stop putting my pictures on Facebook. Give me something. Amen? You put my picture on Facebook, write everything, how good uh, daddy is. I don't, I don't, I'm tired of hearing that every year. Give me... <laughs> Amen? But church, listen. As much as birthday is great, but let me tell you the good news. In the sight of God, I'm not talking of your own side. In the sight of God, Okay? I hope you are getting my English. If you don't get it, Pastor, explain this. In the sight of God, not in the sight of man. In the sight of man, a year has been added to your year. Okay? But in the sight of God, it's opposite. In the sight of God, a year has been subtracted from your years. Do you understand that? Hello? Do you understand that? Don't pretend. Huh? I didn't hear you. No. Can I come to the pastor? Okay. Before you were water and blood in your mother's womb, before I was water and blood in my mother's womb, God already knew the number of years I'm going to spend on earth. He knew I'm going to spend 90 years. I'm praying to be, to have that age, 90 years. He knew. And if God had given me 100 years, okay, God said, Andrew, I'm sending you to the world. You are going to spend 100 years. Okay? And now, I passed 60. Do I still have 60 years on earth? Huh? No. God gave me 100 years. And now I have passed 60 years. Do I still have 60 years on earth? How many years? 40. So next year, praise the Lord. I am 60. Whatever. What happened? Oh, I'm 61. Oh, hallelujah. I am 61. And God say, you are 30. You are 39. Are you getting it? That help you to redeem your time. Because everyone that come into this world must surely live. Amen? So, why do they put clock in basket or other to see the time? Because when the time, at the beginning, you see them playing any type of game. But when the time, you, you understand your basketball, the last five minutes can be played one hour. Huh? Because they want to win. They know Time is against them. So, church, let's understand this. Every day as we wake up, we are moving closer to the end of our journey. What does that tell us? To be afraid? No. To discipline ourselves. To know we don't have the time. Time is not in our favor. Let's do what God called us to do on earth. I want to leave a name behind. I want to be known. I want to be a blessing. I want to help somebody to know who Jesus Christ is. I want to share the goodness of God with others. Whatever God has called you to do, do it because you know no one lives forever. Life is a journey. Amen? Okay, let's stand up to pray.
You are going to say, Lord, or pray this prayer, whatever that we want to pray. Along the road, there are difficulties. Say, God, give me the grace to overcome every difficulties that I will come across as a journey the remaining years of my life. Whatsoever that will make me to doubt who you are, whatever that will make me to question my salvation, whatever that will make me to ask why, Father, give me the grace to overcome them. Whatever that will be obstacle to my life, any difficulty, Holy Spirit, help me to overcome. Let's pray. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. My cup runneth over. Ask God to lead you. The second prayer point is shepherd me, O Lord. Holy Spirit, be my shepherd. to discipline myself help me to be patient help me Lord to be faithful Lord, there are many days of my life. There are many years of my life. I commit it to your hand. Shepherd me. Be my guide. I am not an orphan. The Holy Spirit is my comforter. God, you say, Lo, I am with you always. Father, help us to know this. You are the Alpha and the Omega of our lives. No matter the silence, no matter the mountain before us, help us to walk towards the mountain. If we are to climb it, your grace will strengthen us and will go through. For you are unstoppable. So we are unstoppable. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your blessings. Yes, Lord, we are not losers. We are winners in Christ Jesus. We are blessed because you blessed us. You saved us that we will live a joyful life. 